Linda Singh, your podcast host, and I'd like to welcome you to the My Brand HQ podcast, all things personal branding for career acceleration. This podcast is for talented, ambitious career professionals like you who are wanting to be perceived as a thought leader, to be top of mind to those that matter, and to make an impact and stand out, be that in your team, your organization, or your industry and to be inspired by other successful leaders. I will be interviewing high achieving career professionals who have carved out a successful career in their field and are open to sharing their career journey, their challenges, their learnings and insights with you, someone who is looking to establish your personal brand and accelerate your career. Through my personal branding and coaching practice, I enable career professionals primarily in the technology industry to earn more money to increase their salary. In fact, I spoke to all of my past clients that I've worked with over the several years and learned that actually overall, they've received an average of 47% increase in their package. Would that be a great place to be? They've also all achieved at least one, if not more promotions or moved on to a higher level in their career at another organization. And they're looking to advance their career while showing up as the best version of themselves. If this sounds like you, then do reach out to me and let's have a chat. And why do I do this? Well, during my corporate career spanning 25 years, I quickly realized that hard work alone was not enough to get me to where I wanted to be and the success that I strive for. My belief is that hard work coupled with creating and establishing a strong personal brand can both influence and accelerate your career and get you to where you want to be. In today's episode, I will be speaking to Michaela Jeffrey Morrison. Michaela is the founder and CEO of Ascent Global Media and the founder of the Women in Technology World Series, the world's largest event series focused on women in tech and the only B2B company dedicated to improving diversity and inclusion in business. Since its creation in 2015, Maddox Events, now Ascend Global Media, has exploded in popularity. In just five years, the Women in Tech World Series has grown from one event in London to seven events globally, while attendance has risen from 300 to more than 6,000 people. Ascend Global Media delivers content opportunities, inspiration and knowledge to the women and businesses that make up the technology sector through a series of live events, online conferences and attracts hundreds of speakers from the world's most innovative companies and tens of thousands of attendees from across the globe. In today's episode, Michaela will be sharing what led her to take the leap of faith to founding her global events business why women should explore opportunities to work in the tech industry, the level of importance and the approach to building a strong network, how a hands-on practice what you preach approach in business positions you as a true leader, and why demonstrating empathy and self-awareness is the key to success in both life and in business. So let's head over and hear what Michaela has to say. Hi, Michaela. Welcome to My Brand HQ. It's great to have you on the podcast and Happy New Year to you. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? I am very well. I'm really excited about this chat today. So let's just dive straight into the questions. Right. Tell me, what one thing do you wish you'd known at the start of your career? When I, when I think back to my first ever job out of university and even in part-time jobs before I think I had quite a good mindset which was just to build and and save as much as possible I think knowing what I know now I would advise myself to maybe invest in something potentially and learn more about finance (laughs) and smart things to do with savings Mm -hmm. um when I think back to when I first started Maddox events obviously now recently turned to send global media I definitely say even though our growth was fast and organic, maybe to have urged my business partners and myself to slow down, uh, you make a lot of mistakes growing quickly as a business. And there are definitely some mistakes that could have been avoided. I also think 2020 definitely taught us that taught us all that we need a plan B, C, D, as well as A 
<laughs> this year completely threw us off and and even though we were very quick to react my personal affairs have been all over the place because I was put I, I put everything into Maddox and what it could have been um so I think in some ways sort of get smart with your finances as early as possible slow and steady wins the race and always have plans a to z set <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, plan A, B, C, D, E nowadays, isn't it? With with all the uncertainty that we're all experiencing, right? Yeah. Right, totally. And so what was it, tell me, that had you take that leap of faith from your career to having founded Maddox Events? What inspired you to do that? And obviously Maddox has now Ascend Global Media. So tell us a bit about that journey. Love that question, sort of leap of faith. And I think that's exactly what it was, to be honest. Um, Basically, I, I was almost three years into a job that I'd loved, but no longer challenged me. I was looking to create something of true value and I lived at home. <laughs> um, essentially, I picked up my laptop and did exactly what I had been doing in my previous job. But this time it was for myself. So the energy and the passion that, you know, I put in and we put in at the, at the start really paid off. OK. And so what was it that had you come up with that idea? Why is it you, you've created? So tell us a little bit about Ascend and what you're about and, and so, where the passion's coming from. Yeah, so essentially, obviously, I, I mean, my background was events and creating conferences. Um, and, and one of the things that I really noticed that there weren't that many women, there weren't many people that looked like me <laughs> attending or even speaking at the events that I ran. Um, and so that's what kind of led me on to thinking, OK, well, what events would see more women or sort of more people who look like me join? Um, and I think as, 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 as cringy as it sounds, technology is so important, so interesting. So immediately I was sort of drawn to that as, a, as, a, as an industry. I had quite a few connections in that um, specific industry as well that I thought, let me explore that. And I think my research sort of led me to just think gosh there's so much that we can do with this um you know there's so much that we can create there's platforms that we can build let's see where we go with it um and it was just truly interesting there's so many people that I spoke to and they're from cool companies like Facebook and Sky and Amazon and you know it just made you kind of get excited about so I think that you know the research really led me to to find out okay firstly women are seriously underrepresented in this industry and secondly, it's a really interesting industry. Why didn't I know about it before? I want to find out more. Um, and I think, as I mentioned, one of the reasons why I did it, you know, it led me to start my own company is because I wasn't really being challenged. I, I, I really enjoy creating conferences, but I wasn't that passionate about what I was creating. Um, so it, it kind of just came together um, hand in hand. And I think that after the first event, we saw the impact, um, we, we, you know, feedback was crazy. So um, for it to just organically just continue to grow and develop, and we just kept saying yes to everything. Um, and I think with Ascend Global Media, obviously now as a company, our, we've matured our sort of our, our, our mission, which is essentially to create platforms where people can come together, they can learn, they can share knowledge, um, and hopefully take steps in the right direction to achieve equality, uh, to explore different opportunities, um, and to discuss how and, and, and also, I guess, why, and the, uh, in, how important diversity and inclusion is in general, not just for, for women. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I mean, it's become a global phenomenon now, like what you're doing, that's global, right? And I think with the, the recent online event you did, that was the first one you did that was a global one, because previously you had the kind of country ones, didn't you? You had the Africa, Americas, UK, Europe. America, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we, we would just go to each city and just mm. do a massive women in tech event. Um, and what last year sort of forced our hand in doing was bring that all together and unite all of our community and, and unite our audiences in one big 10,000 strong 65, 70 countries um, all attending. Um, and it was amazing. There was a, we had a quiz 
and um, there was people joining and they were saying where they were from and one woman said you know I'm from Botswana and another person was saying I'm in Dublin and it was just amazing to see so many people from different areas of the world um, but yes essentially our, our big flagship events were the London event, the Amsterdam event and the Silicon Valley event that we used to in San Francisco so those three really were the pillars um, and then we had our smaller Africa event, our Dublin event, join in um, and Boston event as well. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's what we've last year saw us bring all of that together and we're hoping to do that again this year, June um, for everybody. It went really well and I think you can you can still take a lot away from a virtual event uh, as a physical as much as a physical event. I think the almost the best the better thing about the, the virtual event is that you really do get that global audience. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what was impressive about it. You hop on and you've know, all got the time zones, you've got people speaking from all the different countries. So it was a real international experience. And, and so tell me, doing what you do now and knowing what you know, what you've learned during your experience with, you know, founding Maddox and Ascent, tell me, what reasons would you give to encourage more women into tech? Because you refer to the fact that there, there's, you know, a lack of women in that play in that space. So, so what would you say to encourage more people? Honestly, the the world is your oyster when it comes to tech, and, and that's my humble opinion. You know, and even though I I love Ascend and what I've achieved, if I could do it all over again, I'd definitely look into what roles in tech would suit me. It just wasn't on my radar when I was younger I wasn't particularly good at maths or science so even if you had said a career in technology I probably would have assumed I couldn't do it um, and there's probably lots of people out there who would say exactly the same thing um, in 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 the agenda of our first couple of events we actually included specifically some themes and some tracks dedicated to non-tech opportunities um, sorry non-tech roles in um, tech and I found that so fascinating I think you know one there's so much opportunity in tech for so many different skill sets you just might find your perfect fit um, two technology is the future um, will always be current it will always de be developing there'll always be jobs available which again is so important right now um, and why not you know explore it you actually have it as an opportunity to just look at because you might find something that is really interesting um and i think you know in this day and age there's so many things that are op that are open now to women and and lots of different people it, it's not closed off like it used to be you know tens of thousands of years ago um you know there's there, there generally is a lot more opportunity and and you don't have to st stay in your lane or you know be siloed by where you live or what school you went to you can come out of that you can break free so I think it's just about I think it's about one coming out of your comfort zone a little um but two I think it's also about people turning around and giving that opportunity to someone else and turning around and saying did you know that you could do this or let's go and speak in a school or let's go and speak at a university or let's go to this youth club and spread the word a little bit um adverts on tv and you know things like that that are in front of people yeah and, and i absolutely agree and i think what i'm hearing which i absolutely agree with is, is almost um educating or creating the opportunity for people to know more about mm. what is available in that space because often you hear people talk about tech, women in tech, it means you've got to be technical. Um, yeah. But that all the other roles, whether it's you know the finance, HR, sales, et cetera, et cetera, there's so much else which you can go in and do without having to have a strong technical background, but you still get to be in an exciting industry, as you say, that's rapidly changing, growing, it's impacting every aspect of our lives, whether it's personal, it's business. Um, and I just think, from my own experience, it's an exciting place to be. And like you said, it's current, it's growing, it, it's changing all the time. So there's always opportunity there. Absolutely. You know, the, there's, there's speakers who I have connections to are head of engineering. And the first thing they say to me is, I'm not technical. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> really? How is that possible? How have you got to head of engineering and not be technical or not be doing a technical role? 
so yeah I would you know there's just so many opportunities and and you have to either push yourself or or, or those people in those positions really need to turn around and and, and help and we'll get the word out mm, yeah definitely definitely and so tell me a little bit about networking because you mentioned it earlier um what level of importance would you place on building a strong network and have those relationships around you now I'm talking about both for the benefit of somebody who's in a career, how important is it for them? And also from your own experience of growing your own business. Mm. So much importance. Um, Sometimes it's not what you know, but who you know. Um, And when I first started out, I was meeting hundreds of people a day via email, telephone, at events, and you just learn so much. Um, When you have a strong network around you, you can just jump online to connect to get what you need. You know, if I need to speak on a particular topic, I can just check out LinkedIn. Who am I connected to? Okay, I'm going to reach out to them. Um, In terms of successful business, I think when I started out, I could have made more of an effort to connect with event professionals who were or had been directors. I think that would have been really helpful just to learn from. Um, I think I connected with people who could help me and my business partners, my business, maybe too late purely for their expertise, their guidance, which we really lacked. Um, so I think it's important to build a network that you can rely on, you can reach out to, especially in events, things happen last minute, you need to have those people that you know you can go to and go, can you help me out here? Can you chair this? Or can you do a presentation? And you know, it's so handy to have that library of people you can you can reach out to. And, and also for research as well, to ask them their honest opinion. Some of the speakers that I I still am connected to today were at my very first 300 person 2016 event that I did. Um, And I can still say, oh, what do you think of this agenda or what's happening in this sort of, you know, in this sphere? What what, what should we be talking about? Um, And then, yeah, from a a successful business point of view, it's it's to have the guidance or the know-how. We might be a little bit more daring than, than they have been, but it's still good to hear what they've been through and and what they would recommend that we do and or just for reassurance sometimes as well you know we might have an idea but it's good to have maybe like a sounding board and say this is what we want to do and they'll say gosh that sounds risky but yeah I don't see why you shouldn't go for it (laughs) um so yeah that's I would say it's extremely important it's a small world um especially in events in in the industry that I work in and in tech so many people who were at one company, you know, speaking for me has now moved on to another company that now sponsor our events and then they'll move on to another sponsor. So, you know, they travel around as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's extremely important um, to have a strong network, build those relationships. And you just never know when, you know, somebody could help you out or reach out to you and with a, with a business idea as well. Definitely. So it's so true. So tell me then, and this is for the benefit of our audience, how do you reach out? So for example, in your case, you gave examples of maybe wanting to have somebody as a soundboard or to ask for help in some way. How do you develop those relationships? How do you cultivate them when you don't know somebody? Because there's a kind of a discussion around, I've spoken to people who are like, well, I don't know how to do it because I don't know people and I don't want to just reach out and ask for help versus you've cultivated the network so that now when you are looking to ask for help it's a little bit easier Mm. what would you advise people well quite simply if you don't ask you don't get it's you know you don't you don't know someone until you know someone you know and I think it didn't it wasn't overnight that I built up my library of connections and people it's been over a couple of years it's been over you know you know different events and I think you have to be consistent you have to talk to people as people as they are um you have to take the time and I think you know it's not just about calling them and and oh sorry reaching out and just asking them for something it's about calling them and having a connection with them on the phone or meeting them in person and showing them that you care um and you know developing organic relationships really There'll be some people that you meet. I mean, I've probably recruited about 5,000 speakers in my lifetime, five, 6,000. 
but they're only probably about 10 people who I probably would count as still people that I would reach out to you know so it, it doesn't have to be thousands of thousands of people but there'll be some a few gems in there that you can go to with different reasons different seasons mm. um but essentially reach out you know be honest be open continue that relationship um and and yeah just foster it purely I guess it's not it's not something that I think is I wouldn't say it's what's the word it's not premeditated <laughs> you know it's, it just it just fosters it just it just happens naturally if you reach out to people you have common ground you're both passionate about something um you know you both see the benefit in the relationship that you have um you know I met um uh, somebody ages ago at one of my events um and he spoke for me and he kept speaking for me and speaking for me and he actually we we met about seven years ago and he reached out to me just before the Christmas break and we had a, a zoom call and I haven't seen him for like six years or probably spoken to him for about six years but you know we just caught up and it was really nice and just you know there was no real agenda it was just sort of catching up so yeah I would say you know reach out and build it organically and truthfully yeah, yeah. And, and I completely agree and I think you know I've heard a lot of people saying that over the last year with everything that's gone on with with you know the pandemic and so forth it's a lot harder to build and grow your network whereas actually I personally feel it's a lot easier because mm. you're at a laptop all day you know you don't yeah. have to travel around and get you know arrange coffees here and there although that's much nicer to do yeah. it's a lot easier to just reach out and hop on a cat like you said like just a catch-up call that doesn't need to be an agenda and also building that rapport at the moment, we all have something in common. Whatever our actual experience is, it is of the pandemic. We're all going through something similar in yeah. some way. Um, there's a great opportunity there to, to really genuinely, as you say, show an interest and show compassion to other people. And people need that. So I, I personally think it's a great time to, to look at growing and expanding your network. And, and so tell me, as a leader in your own business, what one thing do you feel re is required to be exhibited to to be perceived as a true leader? Um, practicing what you preach, mm -hmm. getting your hands dirty, as it were. <laughs> you know, if you if your staff can see you doing it or know that you've done it yourself, I think it helps you naturally foster respect from them especially when you're telling them to do it or <laughs> to do something um you know I, I remember I used to manually email uh 3,000 5,000 by hand which is copy command paste copy command paste I, I used to do that and now you know everyone's got massive sort of automate automated yams and god knows all sort um and it 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 shows that I, I used to do that manually, <laughs> you know, um, but, you know, it should earn you respect. It should do. Um, it, it sounds a bit odd, but I really, I really struggled. And sometimes I actually still do um, being a leader and worrying what everyone thinks of me or how I'm perceived and you can't please everyone. So I think as long as you are true to yourself, you continue to develop yourself and your ideas, you hold yourself accountable, you exhibit fairness, vulnerability, and you can be transparent with your peers, then you're showing yourself to be a true leader. Yeah. And, and tell me, because I, I like what you've said there, tell me about the, the piece where you worry about what other people think. So how do you deal with that? Every day still, um, you know, <laughs> I think it's, it's a very lonely job being a leader. And I saw that, I mean, that my first ever job, I went from being one of the producers, so I would produce events, um, to then managing a few other producers. And there's a shift, because then you're perceived differently. And you do have to be slightly different because you manage those people. Um, and then I took even more of a step up to actually be part of what what they called sort of the vice president of the company where you would go and discuss more sort of the business matters and that, that took me even further away from who you know those people who used to be my peers um to then obviously then stepping up to owning a company yeah it's it's hard and, and I but I you know I have with at least four or five of of my employees I've actually 
had you know good relationships with actually outside work relationships and that's really nice and if you can have those relationships but still have a certain sort of you know understanding between you when it comes to work that's fantastic but it doesn't work for everyone yeah. um, and you are excluded from you know the slack groups and the, the pub friday nights and you don't get to hear all the gossip you hear it through the grapevine and you know it, it is quite lonely um so i think you know it's something that you 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 just deal with as and when there'll be certain situations that will happen and i'll be like oh um and it you, you can't help it it's just you're human at the end of the day um and I think we all want to be liked we all want to be accepted um but I think it's always business first you know especially as a company owner you have to do what is best for the company um ultimately um and, and that means you do have to remove that emotional part of yourself away um and 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 be a bit tougher and, and be a bit more sort of resilient and yeah you, you have to be happy in your own skin um you know you, you have to call it a night on a friday night when it's getting a bit out of hand and you're like right this is when i go now <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah it's I, th I think you know with with being a leader there there's pros and there's cons the same the same as being uh, as, as being employed it's same as working in startup versus corporate and there's the highs and there's the lows I think you know how you hold yourself um it will speak true of of who you are as a person yeah yeah and it sounds from what you're saying they're real character building particularly when you now got your own business yeah and, and, and you know we are a company where we've you know we're completely sort of on our on our own you know it, it's what we put into the company we get out so when you think that you know this is your livelihood you have to make those decisions with a with a very sort of I guess you know clear head <laughs> um and uh, because you know ultimately if you lost that then you would lose everything and it would be the back to the drawing board or you know you'd have to go and find another job mm, yeah yeah and so tell me then how has uh, any kind of failure that you've experienced set you up for success is there anyone in particular, maybe it's your favourite that you learned from? <laughs> I mean, I think we've definitely learned the hard way in a lot of cases. Um, I think where we've seen most failure, I, I can't really pinpoint one particular one, but it may, may come out as I, as I go on to say. But I think ultimately in the fast growth of a company, that's where, you know, we've needed to invest in people, invest in HR. Um, it, it isn't easy. Um, it isn't easy to manage a lot of different type of people all at the same time as a startup. Um, our failure has been in trusting staff in the past where we probably shouldn't have. Um, not investing in HR soon enough um, and probably setting our expectations too high. Also, when you're trying when you're trying to bite off more than you can chew, you start to lose quality. Um, one because you're no longer doing the job yourself quite frankly um and two because it's really hard to find the right person to do the job instead um and we learned a lot about that um and i but but i do think you know kind of going on to what your the point is failure like that almost needs to happen um because now we've been able to build a really solid team we've got you know fantastic hr processes and structures in place we know who we need in the company to make it work. And we really appreciate and understand how important building the foundations of a solid business is. So I think that <laughs> would be, learnings, isn't it? yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and it's almost like, you know, we have those mistakes that we make, the things that we experience and we, we realize what we do want, what we do need, what's more important. Um, for the next time round, and how we can then refine what we've already got in place. So it sounds like you've gone a long way to doing that now, to be in a much better place yeah. than when you started. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're first-time founders. Um, we were first-time founders <laughs> five years ago. Um, so, you know, five years is quite a long time. A lot happened in those five years. 
Um, and, and not only, you know, I was, what, 26 when I first started out. Um, you know, I was single, I was living at home, whereas now, you know, I am a mum, I'm, I'm over 30. Um, you know, I, I have my own house. You know, there's lots of different things that you just do as, as well as, as, a, as a human being in terms of growing up um, and experience is, is really how you learn. And I think, I think real failure is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll probably make mistakes as a send global media, but, you know, we'll keep learning from them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so tell me then when it comes to investing in personal growth, what's your take on that? Is that something that's important for you? Absolutely. It's essential. Um, I mean, I, I spent, I spent about eight months finding out more about myself with a coach. It was actually a leadership coach. Um, and, you know, they taught me to find out why I am the way I am, how I view things, how and why I react to certain situations. Um, it, it's hard to put it into words. It's just, it's just invaluable. I think investing in your own personal growth is right up there um, mm. because it affects everything that you do. Yeah, not just about the business, right? Absolutely. I mean, it, I mean, I think when it is your business, it, it is your personal business too, right? You know, you, it's you're you're one in the same. Like lots of people say to me, "Oh, do you you know stop working?" And it's like, I can never be off work. You know, I have staff. I'm responsible for people. You know, when we had an office, I was responsible for that office. If there was a fire or someone broke into it you know I, I'm I am responsible my phone is always there you know it's I'm always working um so it, yeah I think it's one and the same but yeah I think when you're a business owner your personal growth your your personal development leadership all of those things you really need, do need to look at um but also if you don't own a business you know where do you want to go you we we all get so caught up in sort of you know the day-to-day 30 years can pass and we're like oh my gosh where did that go what, what happened so I think it is important to stop yourself and you know reevaluate, think about what's making you happy or not um uh, uh, and really take that time to to find out what's going to make you happy because life's too short you know as we're all realizing now right it, like yeah. I think it's making a lot of people stop and take stock of what they're doing why they're doing it and what they want to do differently yeah and tell me then so on this journey that you've been on in the last five years or so what would you say is the new maybe a belief or a behavior something that you've learned that has most improved your life mm, I think it kind of continues on from you know what I learned on my leadership coach um, my leadership coach journey which was learning to be more empathetic um does that count <laughs> I mean I, I, in, in the sense that I was quite quick to react I was led by emotion entirely um and as a business person you really can't afford to be like that um my new learned habit was to be slower to react so if I'm angered or I'm upset I give myself 72 hours before I respond or make any decisions sometimes I don't always last 72 hours but within a few hours more compared to going from zero to a hundred, I generally have a better approach. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, yeah, that's transformed my, my life because it's helped me as a businesswoman, but it's also helped in my personal life. Um, you know, having, you know, relationships, my mother with my partner um, and hopefully with my child now. Um, you know, I think reacting very quickly to things and having an emotional reaction to things very quickly for me was very, sometimes very damaging. Mm. And I think, you know, the fact you've had a coach as well, it's probably made you a lot more self-aware. Yeah. And, and this is something I talk about a lot is about having that level of self-awareness that most of our experience, all our experience comes from the way we respond to situations rather than what's actually happened um so and it's a really powerful thing and, and I think not enough people recognize that we can take more responsibility for 
the experiences that we have and like you say it's not just in business or in in your career it's also personal and your relationships or your family so it's, it can create a huge positive impact for you definitely and I think self-awareness is is key um I, I don't understand how why you can't be self-aware like it's it's almost integral um I think holding 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 yourself accountable kind of questioning the things that you do um you know one of the things I think is is quite hard to do is is admit when you're wrong or to look at what you didn't handle very well um whereas now when a situation happens i i used to have to force myself to think about how the other person's feeling whereas now it becomes a lot more natural the first thing i do is what would i do if i was them or how did i come across when i you know to get that reaction um okay well, i play replay that conversation or the situation in my head and i think about it try and think about it from a you know sort of a, a different point of view or their point of view um because perception is you know it's it's it's, it's actually very scary if you put 10 people in a room and a situation happens and then they all go away and tell the story they're not telling the same story and it's frightening sometimes actually frightening um so yeah I definitely think you know for me anyway it was learning to be empathetic it was understanding that I had to remove my emotion when it came to business especially um and yeah 100 percent. you you need to be self-aware you need to understand who what you are what you're about for sure <laughs> and it certainly helped you to, to achieve what you're achieving right now so tell me Michaela what is next for you on the horizon that's a very hard question in this day and age. yes <laughs> I, I don't know um I mean build 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 and build some more uh, I think that's all I can do at the moment you know professionally personally with Ascend the future does look bright even though we're working through very uncertain times we know that we will do a virtual event um we have them um we have our digital platform that we you know we have you know 10,000 plus members of now we create content for them every week every day um we're planning out physical events um, and they will be ready to go live as soon as we're allowed. Right. Um, and, and personally, I have a soon to be eight month old at home. So she she brightens up every day and gives me many reasons to be grateful and positive. Um, but yeah, I think it's for, 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 for us in terms of Ascend, for me, for me personally, I think this year is all about building. Um, it's all, all about building on what we have, um, being better than before, um, trying to provide as many different opportunities for people to connect as possible. Um, and one of the really good things about Maddox Now Send is that we react very quickly to everything. Um, you know, we went into lockdown a week before everyone else did last year March so you know we generally think on our feet very quickly so I think just continuing to keep our finger on the pulse is 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 is, is next yeah <laughs> <laughs> and yeah great approach I think in these times um and I certainly have seen you you know as an organization you have adapted very very quickly I saw that last year with what you did you know from going from your live events to the online platform and, and everything you were creating for the community so that's fantastic and what I will do is I'll share a link to the platform you mentioned in the show notes if people want to to learn more about that right. uh, and also your your LinkedIn so if people want to connect with you directly that would be great but Michaela I just want to say thank you so much it's been great hearing your story and what you're accomplishing along the way um, thank you. it's absolutely phenomenal and I appreciate thank you, you taking time to have a chat with me appreciate your time too thank you thanks Michaela thank you for listening if you enjoyed today's episode then please do subscribe to the show so you don't miss any future episodes and remember to leave a review telling us about your key learnings and what you enjoyed the most 
and do share this podcast with your friends and colleagues so we can spread the word on the importance of personal branding when it comes to your career advancement and also ensure that others can benefit from these invaluable insights from many inspirational leaders. I will be eternally grateful. And if you are looking to earn more money, to get promoted, to secure your next role and advance your career, and would like me to support you personally on that journey to get you there, then reach out to me and let's arrange a chat. Alternatively, why don't you check out my personal branding launchpad, a group training and mentoring program. Finally, if you'd like to connect with me directly, then do reach out and direct message me on LinkedIn. You can find the link as well as any other resources mentioned in the show notes. I'll see you next time.